Hi, my name is Amin. I'm a PhD student at New Jersey Institute of Technology. I work on modeling various real-world phenomena as dynamical systems. And I'm specifically interested in reduced modeling and analyzing various reduced models. So in the real world, everywhere from weather systems to neuronal networks, we use differential equations. And this is really the language we use to describe our world. So here we have two examples. One is the heat equation, which is a partial differential equation, which we can think of as modeling the heat in a metal plate. And this is a mass spring equation, mass on a spring equation, which is an ordinary differential equation, which models a mass on a spring that's oscillating. So these are simple enough where we can come up with a solution if our forcing functions are fairly simple. However, in various processes in the real world, we have equations which are so complicated that we have to use numerics or asymptotic techniques or other techniques in order to study them. So we can't even solve them, and a lot of times we can't even analyze them. However, analysis is sometimes very necessary. So one of my favorite stories about this is about Poincaré and the King of Sweden. The King of Sweden wanted a solution for the n-body problem. So the n-body problem is when we have bodies in space, let's say the sun and various planets, and we see how they interact with each other. So the King of Sweden wanted a solution for this, and Poincaré actually thought he had a solution and he won the prize. However, later on Poincaré realized there were some intricacies, there were some details that he missed with some of the techniques that he was using. So his techniques kind of led him astray because the analysis wasn't used along with it. So that's why we need analysis along with these very sophisticated techniques. And in order to do analysis on a system of equations, the system of equations has to be simple enough, but we also want it to be, to have the qualitative features of the original models or the phenomena that we're studying. We want it to preserve the important qualitative features. So I can give some examples from work that, products that I've worked on. So this is called the phi4 equation. While we don't yet have a physical phenomenon that is modeled by this, this has some very nice mathematical properties that, um, that are very interesting. So this is why this, is, this equation is studied. However, this is fairly complex and we don't have too much insight into this. We have studied this numerically and in, um, with other means, but we don't have too much insight. However, we can reduce this to a system of ordinary differential equations. So this is also very complex, but the nice thing about this is that it's two second order ordinary differential equations. And second order ordinary differential equations are used to model equations or used to model motion. So we can think of a ball rolling on a surface. That would give us two second order ordinary differential equations. And we can figure out how we can um, massage those equations in order to give us an analogous equation to this. So we can do this by letting by letting capital X be analogous to little x and capital A be analogous to y. And we can find the equations of motion for a ball rolling on a general surface. So those equations would be the second derivative of x is some function of x, the, second, uh, the first derivative of x, and the, and y and the first derivative of y, and a similar equation for y. So from that we get 
the equations of motion of a ball rolling on a general surface, then we can figure out what surface we need in order to get an analogous equation, which is exactly this surface. So we can look at a ball rolling on this surface, and that gives us a physical um, system that is analogous to our phi4 system. So this gives us a very simple mechanical uh, experiment in place of the very complex, very abstract equation, the partial differential equation we had before. So another thing that I have worked on is logical circuits. So we can turn it on. And here is the logical circuit. And while it looks very complex, we only have two main components. So these components are called NOR gates. And this makes up what is called the RS flip-flop circuit. So the RS flip-flop circuit is used to store bits. And here, x is the reset input, y is the set input. So we can draw the truth table for this. So if x is high voltage and y is low voltage, then Q is going to be low voltage, and Q prime, which is the complement of Q, is going to be high voltage. And then if X is 0 and Y is 1, then we say we set the bit, so Q is 1 and Q prime is 0. If we have low voltage coming in, we say that we keep the bit, so we keep the previous state. And one input that's avoided usually is the high voltage input, and that is because we have ambiguity for, for that input. So we don't want our electrical systems to have this ambiguity, usually. So that's why this is usually avoided. However, in more recent years, such as in this circuit, electrical engineers have looked at chaotic NOR gates. So in the standard NOR gate, even in the standard NOR gate, we have this ambiguity. In chaotic NOR gates, we have even more interesting ambiguity. So we get very interesting dynamics because of this ambiguity. So this is modeled using ordinary differential equations. However, it has a very discrete feel to it. So we feel like we can model this as a recurrence relation or a difference equation, which is far simpler to analyze and simulate than a, an ordinary differential equation. So we actually did just this, and we get some very nice um, dynamics that are qualitatively similar to the physical realization. Another project that I've been working on is hydrodynamic quantum analog systems. So I can show you a video. So this is called a walker and it's basically a droplet that is moving on the surface of a vibrating fluid bath. So it's called a walker because it's almost walking on the surface. And this is a wave particle uh, system so we can reproduce some quantum experiments and this system gives us quantum-like properties in the macro scale. So these walkers are modeled as an integral differential equation while this equation is, uh, is a very good equation and it, um, it agrees with the experiments very nicely, it is very complex. So in more recent years, scientists have modeled this using a much simpler equation. So this equation is much more, uh, much easier to uh, analyze. We couldn't really analyze much of the equation before, but 
here we can analyze just about everything uh, on, in this equation. So here we have another discrete dynamical system. So we have a difference equation and it's far easier to analyze than the integral differential equation. So these are reasons we need reduction techniques and we need reduced modeling in order to analyze various systems that we couldn't otherwise. And I would like to thank my advisor, Professor Dennis Blackmore, for guiding me through a lot of these projects. And I would like to thank Siam for coming up with this contest because as a grad student, we don't have the means to share our, our work with a variety of people. So through this contest, we will be able to share our work with not just people from our fields, but in many different fields as well. Thank you for your attention.